this section, I'm going to show another grouping example and then take it another step beyond because I'll incorporate some of the information that I've already described previously in some of the previous sections. So let me give you an orientation of the data itself so you can see the setup. Uh, this is a picture of a nebula. And in all of these frames, all of these uh, files rather, the file name has you know, a common keyword, which is session, followed by a value. Now the values here actually do refer to nights. Uh, it was a way for me to keep track of when the flats were going to match with a particular set of light frame data. It's a little confusing though, because you know, nights, they change their dates in the middle and there's other reasons why it gets confusing, but I had it all worked out in my head, so it was okay. These could, these values could have been anything, as long as it, it could have been uh, Kermit the Frog. As long as I did all Kermits on one night and I did all piggies on the next, next night, uh, then I would be able to match those flats with those lights. So you'll see these are the light frames, and then way down below I have master flats. They too have the same keyword, and then values that are going to match the values that are up above for the particular nights that I was working on and acquired this data. So I'm going to load these files, but I'm going to load it, of course, in WBPP. So here we go. And I like this example because it really is a real-world example. Um, I guess I'm in the directory here. These are going to be the master darks and biases here. So those should have filled here. And uh, you'll notice something interesting because uh, this is a complete data set of what I was doing at the time. Now, at the time was 2012, so this data is quite old, but it's a just a good example. You'll see that I have two binning um, configurations here, uh, and that's true also in the darks. Uh, so this is something I didn't show in previous uh, sections because I didn't have that kind of data, but it is traditional long ago that you would take binned color data, uh, and so it required binned darks and binned biases and so on. So now I'll add all of those light frames and flats. So, oh, went out of the directory. Here we go. Okay, those should have all gotten loaded, and there are quite a few. I want you to uh, pay attention to something. This is going to make it a little more real world here. Notice how the clear filter data is 900 seconds. And then I have some HA data, it's 1800 seconds. And then we have bin 2 color data, and that's uh, 600 seconds. So all things are all over the place, uh, but we'll be able to manage that very quickly in the control panel in just a moment. Now, for some reason, I have a 10 second flat. I don't know what that is. Let me just remove that. Okay. So I think I have everything loaded. Let's look in the control panel and see where we are. So we can see all the masters here. Good news about masters. There's, um, uh, the, you know, like the flats, for example, they're already calibrated. There's nothing I need to do more with them other than this uh, matching that we need to do. And then we have all of our light frames as well. And you'll see that we have some warnings here for good reason. I'll explain that um, as well here because there are things that are not matching exactly, which is why the warnings are showing up. The HA, for example, that does match. That matches uh, some HA, but apparently not the correct one. Oh no, that's fine. Sorry. There it is. Uh, the correct dark it matches, the correct uh, flat it matches. Yeah, everything matches. That's good. But at this moment, we are in no way discriminating between any data taken on any particular night. All of the data is grouped together, and we can see that, of course, if we look here. Um, all of these nights are all grouped together. That isn't what we want. So if we want to divide them into the different groups, we need to add our keyword, which is session here. And then uh, we just add it. And look at that. It's just like magic. Now you'll see that there's session and there's a keyword, a value uh, for this keyword. It's October 30th and November 4th. And, you know, there's different amounts of data taken on different nights. And all of that is going to get matched up in just a moment, which is an incredible thing. All right. And then uh, if we look uh, 
in the flats. We can see here now the flats have also been set up with their appropriate keywords and values, which hopefully will correspond here in a moment. Uh, what I have found, though, is, of course, when I look at some of this past data, I wasn't perfect, and sometimes I would misname a knight, and so you just have to fix that. We'll see. So let's look now at the control panel. And we should see more things are broken up, and here they are. In the flats, you can now see we've added the value for the keyword session. We add all these values here. So we should have multiple instances of filters, you know, multiple clears, multiple HAs taken on different nights, multiple blues taken on different nights, and so on. Same thing down below in the lights. So we should find that a 900 second clear that was taken on October 15th should match something up here taken on October 15th. Look at that. It does. Perfect. And then, of course, we're using uh, dark frames, but you'll note that this is a 900 second dark, and this is an 1800 second exposure, and I'm getting a warning. The warning says the light frame's exposure differs from the master dark's exposure by more than five seconds. That is true. So let me explain this other element of things, which is it used to be that, uh, and you can do this assuming that you know some of the downsides of doing this. So you got to be careful. But there is a place for optimization, and this is the example, where you take a very long dark frame, and then you use that to calibrate all frames that are less than that. It does require that you dither your data. It requires that you remove all the hot pixels, because that's going to be there's going to be a hot pixel population, and some other things. But assuming you handle all that correctly, when you have these long darks and these long exposures with a CCD camera, you can get away with this. So this is the example where you say optimize dark frame here. And then we're going to get the appropriate uh, behavior, which is it's going to scale our dark. You'll notice the warning went away. It says optimize dark, yes. And, uh, and everything is good. So it is going to use this dark frame, but it'll optimize the dark current and subtract that from this 900 second frame. So I need to do this, of course, with all, but I have no, with all of them, but I have no problem doing that because remember, you know, what I'm about to do here is many, many nights worth of work. And once I press run, it's going to calibrate all of these nights in one go, which is just remarkable. So let me go ahead and do that. So let's uh, just do optimize dark. One thing about, I wish I could make this a little bigger, continue to stretch uh, the tool. Not, not CFA, sorry. <laughs> optimize dark. See, this is an 1800 second, nothing to optimize here. I'm not interested in optimizing if it's the same exposure time. So HAs I don't need to worry about for this part. Uh, but these I need to do. So uh, 600 seconds, this is 1800. Yes, I need to optimize these. So we do yes, yes. And depending upon how many nights I've got, you know, I could be clicking here for a moment. But like I said, does not bother me at all because this is just such an awesome thing to be able to do. How many do I have? <laughs> I tell you what, let me click on them all. Be right back. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got them all optimized across all nights. And I, I want to be clear about something here, and this I think will, will be clear if I click on one of these clear images, <laughs> literally clear. Uh, you might wonder, well, if these are matching this and then we're matching these darks, what is, what's the bias for? So the bias is, of course, necessary to do the optimization. And we can see that here. And we can see the master bias is being used in the course of doing this optimization. That's what the K value is for. It scales this... Uh, bias subtracted dark, which is the thermal frame, the dark current, to be able to subtract from the light frame, and then you apply the, the flat, ultimately getting a calibrated image. Perfect. So that is the reason why the master bias is in play here, and it's lit up just as it should be. This is a, I mean, how long did that take me to set up? Just about, you know, a minute, right? And then I can calibrate across so many nights. It's just a, a really beautiful thing to see. Um, and uh, I just think it's great. I do notice that there is a, there's a little problem here. Let's see what the problem is. This says that there is no matching flat for October 20th. 
but I do have something that says, um, apparently I took flats here. So let's be sure. Is there not an October 20th here? It is true. There is not an October 20th. So here's an example where you just need a look in the column. Let's be sure they're all there. Are there any other X's? Yeah, there are a few. Oh, so I did something else. So for some reason, I have a value of October 20th. And I have values that, yeah, I have a lot of values that don't match. Because they're just not up here in the flats. So the question is, if I have a lot of frames that are not matching, because I probably screwed up these values across these multiple nights, well, then what do you do? So here's the last great power of this tool. I don't need to do anything special because the reason why it's not, a, you know, it's not matching is it's this auto matching method here where it's literally looking for the same thing. But I don't need to do auto. I can actually specify which of these, for example, you know, October 20th here, that just could simply match with an October 19th, which is probably what it should have been, or a 21st or whatever. Uh, so let's, and that's a blue, I should have clear here. Yeah, so let's see, clear, you know what I bet? I bet you this data, how many, yeah, I have one frame. I suspect that this was a bad night and uh, so it shouldn't even be in the list, but. Let's just pretend <laughs> the closest date here to match it with is uh, October 23rd. So we come up here and we find whichever one of these is October 23rd. Now, one thing that will be in the new version that is not here is that uh, the, the extra value will show up in this list if there's enough room. I think the problem is there isn't enough room, so I have to actually discover which one it is like that. So now you can see it's linked. That means that it's not automatically doing it, but I am associating this image and uh, this value with this value, which is fine. So that's how you can fix things. So if you have values that are wrong, I can just now say, well, this should be November 4th. And this is just because I screwed up, right? So what is this? This is a, uh, this is an H alpha frame. Which one is, oh uh, wait, it says how many seconds. The November 4th one is 10 seconds. So if I go to the 10 second, there we are. Now I'm matching that with that. So I can just fix all of my little problems, whatever they might be. Is that another one? Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, one more, I'll fix another one and then we'll just call it good. So here we are. What is this? This is, um, this is a blue. And it's 600 sec. Well, yeah, it's going to be 600 seconds. So October 18th, I see. So I go to my blues. How many blues do I have? Oh, I have a bunch. So I'm going to have to guess. Let's see. I'm going to guess this one. Ooh, that's the right one. So October 18th, October 19th. And there you have it. So now everyone has been fixed. Every flat is now linked to the appropriate night. Um, everything is being optimized. Everything is perfect. And then I would just press run. I should point out something, but this is something that you should know if ever you're doing uh, dark frame optimization, which is what I'm doing. You are going to get this warning that light frames are going to be calibrated uh, with a master dark of a different exposure time of so on. But that's because we're optimizing in this case uh, but through the use of these bias frames. So uh, for optimization, that's a fine warning. We're doing the right thing. That's what was suggested to us in the little warning box. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this example. Uh, you know, study what I just did. It really shows all of the possible options, I think, in terms of optimization of darks, in terms of um, matching things, you know, with a normal key value, uh, keyword and value. And then finally, when it doesn't match because I messed up, because I wasn't consistent with my keyword and value, you can even fix that. So uh, there is a, a really excellent example of grouping and um, study that one well.